Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Debbie and I read a lot of books. After the Sophia Beaufort series, I have now gone back to look at the Live Beaufort series. Basically, me and my dad were both reading Sophia at pretty much the same time. And now my dad has gone on to Agent Beaufort while I've gone backwards to uh, the Rebellious Sister ones uh, with Live Beaufort. So book one, in the unstoppable live both on is the rebellious sister that's the front cover for live and I, I after this i will be doing it well i'll read a few and then give you a catch up but because of how the first book is set up i just wanted to tell you like my thoughts on the first book and then going forward i'll do catch-ups so i will just read the blurb for this one for you. Olivia Beaufont likes fixing things and keeping to herself. She's simple like that, but her life is about to drastically change. Liv is a rebel with royal blood who abdicated her birthright. A string of murders changes everything, and the House of Seven asks her to take on a role as a warrior, one of the seven positions revered for protecting magic. Although Liv would rather stay out of the politics and conspiracies that she ran away from years ago, her family needs her. It's only a 12 year stint until her sister, the next in line, can take over. So what's the harm in activating her magic and accepting her place as a warrior? Everything. Justice hasn't been properly served by the House of Seven in a long time. Not until now. Print length is 244 pages and it's in fantasy. Reading age 16 to 18. Um, basically, just, if you like fantasy series, you'll absolutely love these ones. And seeing the other characters in there as well you can tell there's going to be a love story down the road because we know what happens with Liv in the Sophia series um, well I know <laughs> and anybody who has watched my Sophia series we know what happens with Liv going forwards so that was why it was so interesting to go back to Liv at the very very beginning of this story because Liv is just such a different person at the beginning of this story compared to how we see her in this Sophia series. At the very, very beginning of the book, we see two of the Beaufont siblings killed. Then we find out that Liv gave up her birthright as um, a warrior and just as a royal, with the Beaufonts being like a royal family. She gave up her birthright when her parents were killed. In this book, we, we don't know what happened. To be fair, even in the Sophia series, we didn't really get the full story on what happened to the parents. But it does feel like there's a bit of a conspiracy happening because uh, when you look at the relationship between Liv and her uh, brother Clark, Clark, you see a bit of a transformation for Clark throughout the book as well. Because when Liv realises that thanks to her siblings passing away now, she is like, next in line to be a warrior in the House of Fourteen. At first she's just there going, but I gave this up for a reason after my parents died. Liv believed that they were murdered. Other people think that it was just an accident. Either way, Liv is very cynical about everything. And so uh, when she is told that she can get her magic back, because she gave up her magic when she originally left after her parents passed away. Yeah, I just, this feels a bit darker than the Sophia series the style feels different I think it's because it feels like it's longer chapters it just felt a little bit longer in general and this is only just based on the first book but yeah it just feels a bit darker and deeper than the Sophia series even though the Sophia series did eventually get a bit darker I felt that even though there is obviously still the comedy through this I think because this was the one that started off the Beaufont series I believe and so because Liv going forward will be investigating what happened to her parents and what happened to her brother and sister that were killed and you're trying to figure out what her siblings were looking into when they died yeah it just feels that little bit deeper because it feels like the start of this story is Liv and Clark trying to find out what happened to their parents and also those little starting seeds of the corruption within the House of Fourteen. Having read 
the Sophia Bayfront series and now going back to Liv, just seeing the complete change in character of Liv and knowing what Liv turns into in the later books and just seeing that evolvement, even though it's going to, because I've gone backwards and then I'll be watching that evolving going forwards again. But yeah, I just it's, it just feels like a different, like a change of pace slightly from Sophia and um, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just, as I said, this one is book one of 12, so Sophia was 24. I'm looking forward to doing a catch-up a couple of books in, uh, just to find out what's going on. I'm, I'm wondering if I want to do it in, like, batches of four, just four, eight, twelve, so that'll be three videos on these ones. Or if I want to do it like this one, then at book six, then at book 12. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, the idea of just doing this one and then one at book four. I'm going to 8 and then 12, so that would be 4 videos in total. It, yeah, The Rebellious Sister, Unstoppable, Liv Bowfront, book 1. There is a little thing throughout the book where even though her name is Olivia, she's kind of reclaimed her nickname and she's there going, my name is Liv. It's not Olivia, it's Liv. And uh, seeing uh, Liv come into her magic after it being cut off from her for so long because through these books she is learning how to use her magic but she refuses to be trained by the house of 14 she just has to do it on her own and so you've got that but then the main storyline in this one as well as Liv coming into her magic again is Liv going on her first kind of missions for the house of 14 and Liv kind of breaking their rules and creating her own rules and realizing that not everything has to be done by the book because Liv realises that if she's stuck to what the counsellors want from her, in regards to like not asking questions and just taking people out, she realises that what they're doing just isn't quite right. So it's just interesting to see how Liv's role in the House of Fourteen with the count the relationship with the counsellors and her family that are living at the house of 14 like you see like a very very young Sophia in here as well and you realize that Liv feels sorry that she left her little sister there even though they've got other family there but Liv after leaving has now oh got uh, there's a big thing about her confidence and the fact that she prides herself on being able to live outside the house of 14 and having that independence. Yeah, The Rebellious Sister, Unstoppable, Live by Font, book one. And I must admit, after looking at my kind of cast list uh, for Sophia, the idea of Anna Kendrick as Liv just is perfect in my mind as I read the Liv books. Yeah, I feel like I chose well there. And my dad agreed that Anna Kendrick as Liv seems like it really, really could work. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can get more catch up on the Liv Bowfront series as I go forward. See, I'm still reading the Blake Pierce series. I'm coming to the end of Away with the Penguins. That was another sequel one because there's another one of those books behind me that I need to read. And then just all the other little books I'm reading in between. I'm currently reading How to Kill Your Family by, is it Bella McKee? Bella Mackey? And I must admit, that book lives up to the hype of what I've read so far. I'm really, really enjoying that book. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to seeing what else happens with Liv and seeing that character evolve into the character that I know in Sophia series. Yeah. So uh, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time with another video. Mwah. Love you all my lovelies. Bye!